everybody, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with the last part of the 30-day book and paper arts. Uh, I don't think she really considered this a challenge. It was for me. I, th I saw she did the month of October, I mean August, and I decided to do September. So this is the last installment because we're done. Um, let's see. Let's get some of this mess out of the way. I was just painting the last picture in the book. All these little pumpkins came from Pinterest. I painted each one on watercolor paper, then cut them out. With October coming, I have been seeing these guys everywhere. Each one of these came off of, there was a picture on Pinterest that showed a whole bunch of different kinds of pumpkins. So I tried to make my pumpkins look like those on the Pinterest um, page. These are supposed to be corn stalks with tassels on top of them. I just needed something in the background. It was too white in the distance between my writing and then where I glued these. So I painted these first, then I glued these on, and then at the last minute I put the gold tassels on the top. These were a lot of fun to make, not so fun to cut out. Um, cutting out computer paper is a whole lot easier than cutting out watercolor paper. All right, so the next one is I look at this every day, and I wanted to talk about looking at something every day and never getting tired of looking at it. And that is a ceramic bowl that my friend made for me from North Carolina. And I just love this little bowl. It's just the cutest little bowl. And she, she knows how much I like green and earth tones and leaves. So she made this bowl for me. Yay. And I really love it. And I want her to know that. So I put it in my video. I hope she watches. I might have to tag her on it so she will. Okay, let's see. This one. Then, the next day, another person that's a friend. Oh, I forgot to tape her name out. Let's just slide that on in there. Um, I got a shock because she made a, a, a brief reference about she sent me something and I will be surprised. I'm like, uh, um, I didn't ask for anything. Y'all don't need to send me any stuff. And then this came in the mail. This is so cool. She had one, and I had lust in my heart for it. <laughs> and I put it on my list of things I wanted to buy later. But, you know, I don't, I don't always buy the things I want because, really, do I need them? No. Sometimes you buy stuff because you just love it. And I'm going to show you the real thing in person. And this is it. This is a double knitting bowl, and this booger is heavy. So it's not like you pull on it and it's going to scoot around. But it has enough for a whole skein of yarn in it. Um, but since I'm going to be knitting um, a baby afghan, I put both the colors in here that I'm going to do the next afghan on. And it will, it will be a pleasure to use this. I probably will not be transporting it from room to room like I do my other stuff. It's a nuisance. I have a cat who... Um, doesn't like anything that he's not used to in the room and so he thinks he has to pee on it. So I make sure I don't change anything. I don't leave my knitting out. When he's in here, I watch him like a hawk. I would love to need, have a, um, a basket. I have some baskets from Ghana that I bought from um, Maryland Sheep and Wool years ago and I love them. And I would love to keep my, my knitting in them except for the cat is opposed. <laughs> and I don't want anybody to pee on my stuff. So to avoid any conflict, I just keep stuff in here or I'll just take a little project and go from room to room. I did buy two side tables that have a drawer and then they have, it looks like two fake drawers bound below it, but it's a cabinet and you open it up. And I have put my knitting bags in there for projects, one in the living room. And then I have a whole bunch of projects sitting out on a table here that's the same kind of table that's in the living room. But the cat doesn't spend a lot of time in here with me, thank goodness, because my knitting projects would be at peril. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank my friend for this lovely knitting bowl. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I could not resist painting it to show her how much I love it. I put it in my book. All right, so let me move this over here and get rid of my friend's name off of there because I don't want it. You know. Oh, this one, I 
there's another person's name for Pete's sake. Okay, anyway, I got gifted a set of these, I guess they're Nouveau brush pens, and I have been using them. Actually, I used those pens on this because I wanted to see what they did on watercolor paper, and they do fine. Um, and this is what I painted. This is the example I used. This was sitting right in front of me on the desk with the pens and the um, flower pot that I painted with Posca two or three summers ago. It was during COVID. And um, so I, I painted them while we were kind of cloistered at home. Put them outside and the paint started peeling off of them. So as soon as I figured that out, boy, I got them back in the house because I was so unhappy. I put so much work into those little pots to only have the elements peel my paint off. And yes, I did seal them. Did not make any difference. Not a bit. So I won't be doing that again. <laughs> not for outside, that's for sure. I did like painting the pots though, and they are useful. So that's what I used on here. I used those Nouveau, I mean, yeah, Nouveau, whatever these things are. I don't know what they are. They're brush, watercolor brush pens of some sort, uh, ink pens. I, I don't know what they are. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to try them out, and I thought they did really well. <coughs> excuse me. All right, so thank you, friend. Then um, I wanted to go to the Pilot pen sponsored ink pen show in Dallas at the Galleria which is like smack dab downtown Dallas and uh, we were all set to go until I read you got to pay ten dollars a head and then you got to pay to park and I was like uh okay so that's an hour and a half to get there at least thirty dollars before we even get in the door and then more gas to get home and I told my husband I said as much as I'd like to go for me, it's not worth that money. I'd rather spend the money locally here. So we went to a place called Cedar Chest in McGregor, Texas. This is a place, I think, that Joanne, um, what's her name? Oh, my word. The lady from Magnolia. Jeez, Louise, it just, my brain has gone away. Anyway, so they shop there once in a while. And we were in there, and I'm going to have a video and some still photos about the inside of this place because it's phenomenal. I didn't buy one thing when I went in there. I saw lots of things I would love to have, but I'm thinking, really, do you need them? Do you want them bad enough to pay that price? No, there was nothing in there that I wanted bad enough to pay the price they were asking. I'm not saying they weren't worth it. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that, you know, I, I don't buy everything I see. Thank goodness, my house isn't big enough. <laughs> All right, and the last one is, or second, oh, we got a couple more. Um, a couple years ago, and I think, again, this was during the pandemic, I bought a clear lamp because I saw a display that somebody had filled up the lamp with something that they liked, like flowers and all kinds of stuff. I thought, well, I can do that, but I'm going to fill mine up with mini books. Now, I have a couple glass jars that are full of mini books, but it's not enough to fill up the bottom of this lamp yet. I don't like white lampshades. So I took pens and I doodled this kind of pattern all over the lampshade. I have a video of me doing it. And I'm very happy with the way it looks. There's no color, it's strictly black and white because Lord knows there's enough color in here already. Um, and so I wanted to show that this is one of my favorite pieces of art that I did here in the art studio that was for a purpose. And I'm getting close to filling it up with the mini books. I think it'll be very cool once all the mini books are in the base of it. I really like it. I really like it. Okay, so this is the last entry because today is September the 30th. And this is what I drew. I did not You'll see the next video that talks about this piece right here. I'll insert the video that I took of painting this and talking about it. So this was the last day, and I wanted to thank um, Book and Paper Arts because she inspired me to do this, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a challenge to draw things. I didn't think I could draw and paint things. I'm not 
I wasn't sure I could paint. But, you know, you do something every day, you do develop a good habit, and you develop a technique of knowing what's going to work and what's not. Some things turn out better than others. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Some of them were a bit of a challenge because my perspective in drawing is not, uh, I don't want to say good, but it's just, it's just not there. And that's it. But I had a good time. And what also something else that came out in this is my life really is boring. <laughs> And I am perfectly fine with that. I ran around for many years when my kids were little with my hair on fire. The fire's been put out, and now I'm in recovery. So here's just the backwards view of things I talked about in the other two videos I did on this book. I enjoyed doing it. It was fun playing with it. And I'm glad the month's over, but I will keep watercolor painting and I I will keep trying to do little goofy sketches which suits me just fine I don't need to be an expert sketcher I'm okay with my little goofy stuff it's it's fine I'm I'm good all right so this is the end and the next um, the next series of videos will be the Zentangle in Inktober or I don't Zentober I don't know what they call it anyway so I will be doing that starting tomorrow. And I will do videos to update you. All right, this is where I'm going to insert the video where I um, painted this last portion here. And you can see what happened with it while I was working on it, what I found out about something that I was very unhappy about. Okay, so on to the next video. Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with my very last video on my 30-day um, uh, journal in my Sausalito cookie bag. I love these cookies. Okay, um, so this last one says, This project has been a mixed blessing. I have enjoyed it for 30 days. I am glad it has come to an end. The experience of painting every day has been fun. Sketching ha has been a challenge, but a good one. Like summer, this has ended, but left a lasting impression. I can learn to watercolor and I learn, I can learn to watercolor and I can sketch. Alas, it's time to move on to Inktober. I am still going to paint and sketch. Thank you, Book and Paper Arts. So, I... I'm sketching this and painting this. They're tulips. So that's what I'm I'm doing in the book. And in order to not interfere with the white paint that I'm going to paint over because the box is white, I took the ink from um, this set of inks and glass pen and drew the heart and the crackle in the wood. I think the heart and the leaves were a little heavy-handed, but it's okay. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff, not on this, because I'm at the end, and I'm at the end. <laughs> so I think I will go ahead and paint this. Of course, I have my prerequisite dirty water. I see the upside and the downsides of dirty water. You don't want dirty water when you paint with the white paint, because now my dirty water will have a tinge of green in it, because it's tingy green <laughs> and so I don't want it to be like that so I think what I'm going to start with is I'm going to do the red in the heart because that's what it is on the stamp oh that's really red oh and the ink is not waterproof look at that oh this is going to be ugly Okay, that is not, I did not expect that, that these were not waterproof. I didn't use Doc Martin because I wanted to try this set out. And now I see this is not going to work. I am not hippie. Not hippie. Oh, my goodness, I did not want that to happen. Okay, so I have to figure out that I can, I can only do this very lightly on here. Well, that didn't go well either. <laughs> So then I, oh, I don't know. 
what I'm going to do about this. I didn't even test, I should have tested the ink before I started. This is not the kind of ink I want. This idea of drilling holes in the wood piece came from someone I know in a chat named Debbie Farrell. And she said her husband had done this. I told my husband I wanted him to do it for me because it's easy to just unscrew them and they're in there, some of them are in there more tightly than others, but it works really well this way. So I really like this. So thank you, Debbie Farrell's husband, Debbie, I don't know who came up with the idea, but it, it's worked really well so far. All right, so I'm gonna let this mess dry. What is that? That is a crumb. Go away. Um, so I'm gonna let that stuff dry. And I'm going to um, work on things that are not ink related because I did not test it before I did it. Never dreaming that that ink was going to go everywhere. So I'm not real happy about that. Oh. So I'm just going to kind of blob it in there. I've moved my light upward so it's kind of hard for me to see my pencil drawings of this stuff because I did it some places it's very light other places it's a little darker and this it, I don't need for these to be exact that's okay with me if they're not I need a thinner brush there we go this is a three artify round I think that's what these are. To, all of these are artifies, the black handled ones. And then I have some that are these that are says number four and it is bowed. I don't I don't think I've ever used this one before. I don't know what brand those are. Let me see. Is, it, is there a brand on them? No, number 10. Okay. I guess we're not putting brands on things. 18. I don't I might have gotten these at a Jerry's Artorama show in um North Carolina that I went to. Okay, I don't want to use those inks. What am I thinking? <laughs> don't touch those. Don't even think about it. You know, I used to be very critical when I watch people watercolor paint. And I'm like, why is their palette always so nasty looking? Oh, I so know now. <laughs> I so get it. All right, so I'm going to start with some of these leaves towards the bottom so I don't bump into the red. I don't want my um, red and green to mix. Once I finish painting this, when everything's dry overnight, I will go back and I will erase whatever um, pencil marks I can get out of there, but I really don't care. They're on there so much. But some of them that, that are really obvious, I, I do want to get off the painting. I'm not trying to shade or do any proper watercoloring or whatever. I don't, I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm only filling in where leaves go. And then I'll come back and uh, go over it with, a, with an ink pen. A permanent ink pen, <laughs> unlike this ink here, which really is disappointing. Number one, I should have tested it. Number two, I'm if I even if I had tested, I'd be disappointed that I can't use it. Cause I made sure that we had a nice little setup there. And I guess I'm going back to my Bombay inks because they are waterproof. Okay. So let's see, what do we have here? I'm gonna let this dry and I would like to be able to cover this up, but I can't now because I don't think it's gonna work no matter what I use on it, it's gonna bleed and get icky. I could take, <gasps> oh, that's, that's what I could do. I could take another piece of watercolor paper and glue it down on top of there to get rid of all of this. Now I've made that mistake. I 
I think that's what I'm going to do because I am so irritated that this has happened. I am so not excited that this has happened. I need to... Nope, that's not going to work. First, let me cut this thing. I am really disappointed. Really disappointed. All right, let's see if we can fix this. Got that there. And then... That right there. It's just so sad that I wanted to use those inks so bad and had my husband drill holes in it and everything and now they're not waterproof and I just might not keep them. I don't know. I don't want anything that's running while I water paint over it. Let's see, can we do this? Not quite long. Okay, I need something a little thicker. Maybe this is the one I should have used. Yes, I think so. So after I finish painting these, let me just go ahead and do this. Let me set these aside. So I need the little heart Although this is not straight, is it? Let's try to fix this a little bit. I mean, it's really bowed, but I don't have to make it so bowed. There, I mean, shave it off a little bit. Okay. Let's see again. Yeah, that'll work just fine. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the heart, and I'm not going to do it like... Um, with ink, <laughs> cause this sucks. So I just paint a little bit in here and it'll dry lighter than what it really is and that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. Totally. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit aside and then I'm gonna paint the green leaves on it in a few minutes. Okay, let's see, what's the situation here? We still have a little bit of green, uh, wet right there, but I think I can go on with what I started. Now, I filled up this thing with um, tea, um, black oolong tea, the dried leaves after I did the tea. So, I'm gonna, um, gonna, I'm going to paint a little bit of that in there using, what is this, uh, Van Dyke Brown or, yeah, Van Dyke Brown in here. There we go. So that'll show that the, there's dirt where they're growing. They're not just growing out of a white box. This looks like it's soaked in enough. I might be able to go ahead and do the leaves. See, that's the thing about watercolor painting. You have to have a backup. Every two or three seconds, you need a backup because um, stuff's not drying as fast as you hope. All right, let me look at this. This goes this way. And then I'll draw in the lines. Oops, got it in the red. Good enough. Let that dry before I do the pen work on it. Let's check this out. What do we got here? Okay, I have my standard backup outlining pen, which is a Signo. Is this a Signo? Yeah, the Signo Uniball. So, I'm just going to line this stuff in black, give it a little more 
definition than just painting it. I like doing ink work over my watercolors. I'm not an abstract water watercolor artist. I like the ink definition. I might have to put a little more red at the bottoms of these guys. And some more green up to the throat of the flower. Don't know. Yeah, I don't have any stems here. There's either seven or eight of these little flowers that I made in the box. And I wanted to make sure I had that many in there when I did the painting. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better, although kind of hard to see with that big old ugly ink hard on there. Ugh. All right, so I'm gonna fill in the gaps here. And I know I can do it because this ink's not gonna smear. I see that and let's see what happens. <laughs> make that go up a little higher and then put maybe a little dark on the leaves a little darker you have to go all the way up do you guys talk to your paintings while you do them I got pinged by YouTube recently over a video I made in 2022 against their policies of something which I, I can't determine what it is I did wrong. I, I don't know, I don't know what it is I'm in trouble for. <laughs> they said they took the video down so I went back and looked at my content still there so I, I'm not sure if this is real take that out of there or I, I don't know if it's a scam or I, I just don't know I don't know what I did and I don't know how to fix it so I did make an appeal but I haven't heard diddly squat okay so as soon as those dry <clears throat> excuse me I'll do the pen work on those and I think this is dry enough now I can do this and I have to look at the box. Yep. And I'm not trying to line it exactly the way it did in the stamp. And that's a stamped heart on there with those rubber pegs. And I get, I don't think maybe I'm going to do the, I think maybe I'm not going to show the crackle on this because I already messed it up on the other one and I'm not really confident in doing it on here. So I think I'm going to skip that part. I'm going to glue this on, providing my glue cooperates. Since I've got the brown in there for, come on glue. <laughs> Since I got the brown in there for the tea already and the bottom of the stems of the flowers and the bottom of the leaves, I think it'll be okay to glue over this. All right, so I might be getting rid of these inks. I want waterproof inks. I don't I don't want things that'll that will I don't want things that'll bleed on my stuff. I don't know. I'll put them aside and think about it, but I'm thinking probably they're gone. All right, so that I fixed that. Well, I think I did, who knows. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. just outline it in black pen. 
so it kind of matches the rest with the pen. Uh, let's see. There we go. Now all I have to do is the line work on the flowers. And then this will be my last entry in this one, which, you know, is kind of bittersweet. I really enjoy doing this. I found out that I can make little goofy sketches and I still like them. And that um, I really still like working with watercolor better than I do acrylic. I mean, acrylic has its place, don't get me wrong, but for me, my preference is watercolor, even though I don't do it often and I don't know a whole lot about it. I do really enjoy it. This one's a little bit wet. All right, so that is my last entry on my 30-day journal. Yeehaw!